All right, so this is, uh, we're recording uh, the end of a conversation with the Catalyst Club, which is a paid membership community. This is a Monday on Purpose call where we're talking about the question, what are we optimizing for? And MJ has kicked us off with a great query and we've heard from the group. And now uh, I'm going to weigh in with my two cents, which is going to be more like 20 bucks worth. Um, to reiterate my answer to Cato about like, what do we mean when we say, what are we optimizing for? We talk a lot in this community and you read quite often in my writing, this whole idea of, of play your game and the process is the shortcut. I shared a link up earlier today. Um, and this was one of those moments of weakness of mine where there is someone that um, looks a lot like me, only maybe 30 years younger, that is giving dogmatic advice for how people can become successful writers. And I could not resist saying, you know, dogmatic advice like this can be unhelpful at best and dangerous at worst. Because when someone that aspires to do a thing sees someone that apparently is successful and they say here's how you do it it can be very easy to just do someone else's thing uh so the fact that someone is sharing something that worked for them in the past is on the face of it perhaps generous but if you do not if you state it as an absolute or dogmatically as the way that anyone can get to where you are you're basing that on two very dangerous assumptions. Number one, it worked for you in the past and it's not the past. And everyone that's reading this approach of yours is not you. So it all begins with what does success look like for you? What does success look and feel like for you? What is, you know, and it's that's not going to be an absolute fixed thing. We, you know, your definition of success is going to probably iterate over time because you're going to become you're an evolving creature as you continue to move toward this vision of success in your life. Um, that destination may start to look different. It and which and it may require um, tweaking your path, iterating your path. But you you have to begin with. You have to begin with a definition of, you have to define your destination based on who you are and what you know now. You have to, you, otherwise you will never start. So you begin there. And then the question of what am I optimizing for? That's, that is the obligating question because there are many ways that you can get from where you are to where you want to be to uh, circle back to what MJ said, to close the gap. Um, and not there's no perfect way. There's no right way. There's no wrong way. Um, there are ways that are more aligned with your intention and integrity. And there are ways that are not as well aligned with your intention and your integrity. And when you're asking, as every obstacle or opportunity comes along, if you ask yourself, what am I optimizing for? It's a way of saying, is exploring this thing, doing this thing, adopting this thing, is this going to get me closer to what I want? Well, we have to remember, number one, that anything we add to our to-do list, anything we add to the system that we've created to get from where we are to where we want to be is driving down the reliability of the system, because systems are multiplicative. You have to multiply all the things that you're doing and the efficiency of all those things in order to get an overall reliability quotient about whether it's going to get you closer. So it doesn't mean that you can't try new things. It doesn't mean that, you know, you can't, um, you know, add something and take something away, all these things. Those are, but you should make those as reason choices and it really helps if you're um if you're also measuring or collecting data about how those things are or are not getting you closer like and this is all 
not to say that you shouldn't allow, like I'm totally down with, I'm going to do this because I feel like it. Because sometimes your instincts and your intuition, especially if you have already been practicing, had a practice of being pretty um, reasonable about choosing your destinations and choosing your path, like you, you're honing instincts and intuition that you've had forever. So no right or wrong answers. But here's here's the way I was thinking about it that I think might be useful to Kim and Sandra and Penny um, and MJ, who was thinking about uh, the questions that I shared over the weekend to do the Be Helpful campaign. Of course, we don't know for sure. There is no certainty, no absolute certainty that any path that we choose or any uh, three things that we think are going to have to happen for us to get from where we are, where we want to be, are going to get us there because so much is beyond our control. Time and randomness are undefeated and they don't always work for you, but you can get them on your side if you have, a, if you lengthen the time that it, you're giving yourself to achieve what you want and you set yourself up to benefit from when random unexpected things happen. And so one of the things that I was thinking about as I was responding to people's um, Be Helpful campaign questions was, and I'll just give some examples without mentioning names. If you, if you have an immediate goal about getting um, a certain number of clients, maybe because you, you want a certain amount of, of revenue, or um, if you have a certain uh, goal around, you know, the kind of clients, the audience that you want to attract with your offer, uh, or something personal, if it's around fitness, weight loss, whatever. To directly answer your question, MJ, when you're trying to answer the question, you know, what's the best, what is, you, Kato and I have a favorite movie that we share. It's Frozen 2. And we disagree about which refrain we should use, but I use the refrain, just do the next right thing. Kato prefers do the next right thing, but that's fine. Um, you know, how do we decide what the next right thing is? And here's the thing that I hope is helpful to everyone and hopeful, especially to the people that answered the questionnaire over the weekend. What is the step before the step? In our rush to close the gap, we are often thinking many steps ahead of where the, the actual next best step, which means that we can... That, that can be dangerous because if there are several steps before the step that we're taking and something happens that we would have discovered had we taken the actual next right step, we can set ourselves up to get stuck or to have to make a big pivot or to have to take our big step back, you know, so that we can then take the next right, do the next best thing. So I'll just, as an example, if I have you know, and I always warn against revenue goals, but a lot of us think about these things with a, a revenue goal in mind. If I have a revenue goal, a monthly revenue goal in mind or an annual revenue goal in mind, that's a whole different discussion. Um, and that goal depends on um, a certain number of clients enrolling in our offer. What's the step before the step? Well, before you have clients, what do you, you what step has to happen before you enroll a client or onboard a client or sell an offer to a client that has to have a conversation, right? And I'm just this is just off the top of my head. There's many ways to think about this, but okay, cool. So I need to have calls. Oh, wait a minute. What's the step before the step? Well, before I have to have a call, I have to have a conversation that sets me up to have a successful call. Well, what kind of conversation would that be? 
how am I going to initiate that conversation? Again, lots of ways to think about that. Maybe I send out a, a silver bullet nine word email. Maybe I send out a be helpful campaign. Maybe I post something on social media, you know, with a two step that gets someone to raise their hand for a thing. Lots of ways to initiate the conversation. How do I have a conversation that leads to a decision call instead of a discovery call? Discovery calls are always, it's just a way of saying sales call. It's, it, sounds, it sounds better. So we say discovery call, but most of the time a discovery call, what a coach, your typical coach says discovery call, what they mean is how do I get you on a call where I can back you into a corner and make you buy the thing that I want to sell you? I'm not saying that's totally true for everyone, but it's often the case in my experience. I've worked with a lot of coaches. Um, what I have learned is, and I've been a person that's hosted discovery calls and been very successful at it. You can learn to close someone on a sales call. That's actually pretty easy to learn. What's harder, but more rewarding is how do you get someone on a call where all you're doing is deciding how you're going to work together? It's much more fulfilling call to have, and it totally empowers the client, which means that you actually will avoid any possibility of buyer's remorse or most of the po possibility around buyer's remorse or um, onboarding someone that's actually not a good fit right now because they're not completely prepared or invested in the journey you can take them on. So... What am I optimizing for? What is the most immediate goal that I can imagine that I need to, to achieve in order to make significant progress to, the, to my version of success? And then ask yourself, what's the step before the step? And keep asking yourself that question until you get to a step before the step that you can't find another step to. And Elizabeth actually gave us a great idea. Like that whole, like I'm big on creating a to-do list I because it feels good, right? You write all the things that you're going to do. And then you realize like you put, you know, wake up, brush your teeth, have breakfast, you know, all the things that you're going to do anyways. And you say, oh God, I got to take all those off. That's just stupid. And you get down to maybe three, half a dozen things. Like when I get to that point, I, I just look at my list and say, what is the thing that if I did now, would actually help me close the gap, help me move the furthest and the fastest towards the thing that I want. And that's the thing that I do. That's the next thing that I do. I don't do anything else until I do the thing that to the best of my ability, I can assess is the thing that will get me closer to what I want. Catherine referenced the workshop a couple of weeks ago. I gave you four questions to consider and I would encourage you to look, but you'll get a, a, a replay on Wednesday um for that workshop but pay attention to those questions because they are really powerful like first thing to do is look in the rear view mirror what's worked in the past that i i am not considering right now even though it worked in the past how do i can i just do that again can i iterate or improve what i've done in the past so that it works a little bit better this time what's the um you know what's what's the thing that if i did it now would actually move me closer What's the what's the thing I could do now that has the best worst case scenario? You know, what's if I ask the question, this is, or if I look at this and feel like it's impossible and I ask myself, this is impossible unless, like what are the things, it, all ways of helping you get to the step before the step so that the next thing that you do actually helps you close the gap no matter how much. Because every time you take a step into the possibility you imagine for yourself, you have just put yourself in a brand new place to quickly go through that whole process again. What am I optimizing for? Is that still where I want to go? Is this still the best path? If so, what's the next right thing that I should do right now? Is there a step before the step? And it's over time, it becomes instinct and intuition. It's not like this long drawn out thought process. Everybody always asks me, Scott, I love what I loved all of your little processes and tools and systems, but they take too long to walk through. Yeah. So did learning to ride a bicycle until it didn't. 
you just keep practicing until it becomes second nature. And then you just, it's something that you just do. You become a bike rider. You know, you don't have to think about becoming a bike rider anymore. You just are a bike rider. And then you get to decide where you're going next. Okay, that was a big rant. Go ahead, Cato. Well, and as you were speaking, it just reminded me so much of this is exactly what I would walk myself through on my way to any rehearsal with a group where I'm leading the group because I already have the structure of who, what actors, what we're, what we're going to be rehearsing. But on the way up, what I would do is organize, how am I going to, what does each individual need? What's the mix going to be? How am I going to help them get there? And I just, I guess I was running it's optimization right because it's about what's the next thing and i'm also guiding them through very uncomfortable things about learning lines you you have to put the book down now you have to be stand there and go line 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 while you don't remember it and we're going to walk through that painful thing together because it is a system of failure until until the group comes together we come to production by the time we're not failing that's when we open the show and the point is to get them through that process and it's so uncomfortable and weird and helping coach them but I, the more you talk, the more you realize how many things there are that don't have the same language base, but like it is exactly that structure, only I'm helping a group of people move through that as a theater director. So thank you, Scott. You're very, very welcome. I think that most of us, if we reflect, we'll see that most of the things that I share are things that we've already done, maybe even known in the past, because most about, most everything about succeeding in life or business or anything else is the same thing over and over and over um you know my favorite place for to start people that are in like when someone raises their hand and say i like what you're saying where do i start i always send them the start with who article because if you're not prepared to have that conversation with the person that looks back at you in the mirror it's is gonna be hard or or it's it's going to be hard to work with me um but i'm yeah so just i don't know if it's going to be the next workshop or if it might be just a thing i do with you all in the catalyst community um but i this idea of um well something that really worked for me when i kind of like got my head wrapped around and got some rep, reps in around like what is my next most immediate objective goal priority and what are the two or three things that need to happen in order for me to achieve that and then started to think about like how what's the step before the step you know what's the step that I should take next one of the things that one of the most powerful levers for me was to start thinking about doing things in um 90 day accelerators sprints whatever you want to call it um and for those like for penny and uh, mj and brie and i can't remember everybody that's in the um arena catalyst but um you know for you all it could be a you know because you've already done some of that work it might be a process that would be worth learning a little bit more about but it would be helpful for any of you that because like your 90 day sprint could be <laughs> i don't know what i'm optimizing for like i want to figure that out first like there's that's cool like the first thing is to like have an honest conversation with yourself about how clear are you about what you actually want to get closer to because if you're not clear enough you can just try a bunch of things and that is a way that you can get that clarity but you know there are other ways that you can start to establish a clear enough destination on the horizon that you're heading toward and then put in the process that as you employ it will help further clarify that destination um and the clearer you are about where you want to go and where you're starting and what you're starting with the more effectively and efficiently and easily it is um, to close that gap. So I'll just float that out there um, as something that I'm possibly interested in presenting, at least to you all, if not to um, the larger group of subscribers. So 
any uh any other final uh questions or reflections before we wrap up uh, uh once again scott ran us way over the half hour he promised that he would take from us today <laughs> um i'll just say thank you because this was exactly what i needed today thank you you're very welcome funny how that sometimes works out isn't it Catherine and Elizabeth were just the perfect mesh for me. Like Catherine's one thing, Elizabeth's MJ, if you didn't have to do anything in the rest of the day, those two things really synthesize for me. Super helpful. So thank you both. Awesome. It's often just about doing the next right thing, right, Cato? That's right. One well, is the one other thing, because you're talking about your sprints, because you talk about catalysts, which always makes me think of catapult. And then and that kind of thing. But the thing about like well, how the catalyst works though is just before that, just before you take an action, you need to do the op the opposition because that's where the energy is gained, and that's true in any of those things that move forward. So that that moment where you're talking about the the reflections and what's that next moment and that little gate the gathering of the energy so then it can move is uh, an interesting thing, the structure of the wave or whatever, whatever that is. And I think what I heard from people is you're reflecting on that moment too, that moment that you, because you make up your mind and once you make up your mind, you do the opposition so that it springs forward and what that is like. That's a great reflection to which I will add. There's also the kind of catalyst that works on something that has pent in potential within it like you simply add a drop of water to potassium nitrate or i can't remember anything from chemistry but there there are those catalysts that like just one drop of this suddenly leads to the explosion that you have been waiting for because it's actually been waiting for that one little thing that will get it so lots of ways to think about this stuff yeah. Appreciate you all i hope you all have a great week and uh maybe see you on friday and um Check your inbox uh, on Wednesday for that replay and uh, holler if, you, if there's anything else I can do. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, everybody. It was good to hear from everybody. Thank you all. And thank you. Likewise. Thank you, Kato.